ACPMP was created in 2008 by um, a community of individuals directly affected by appendix cancer and pseudomyxoma peritonei, which is a related clinical syndrome. Um, we came together in 2008, met in a online support group and started a 501c3 nonprofit um, at the time and uh, had some pretty successful fundraising right off the bat. So starting in 2009, we began funding research grants um, and we've been funding 100 to $150,000 in research grants every year since then with um, 1.2 million total, our most recent grants to be announced in the next week or two. So appendix cancer is considered rare. Um, estimates vary, but uh, between two to four people diagnosed per million per year. Uh, our organization deals with the tumors arising from the epithelial cells of the appendix. Um, tiny tumor grows in the appendix and often sneaks out. The appendix will seal itself up and the little tumor will begin to proliferate in the abdominal ca cavity. Um, this can lead to a condition called peritoneal, peritoneal surface malignancy, um, which will involve tiny tumors prol proliferating all throughout the abdominal cavity. And in our condition, many of these tumors are mucin producing tumors. So the tumor will produce mucin that will accumulate within the abdominal cavity, leaving, leading to a condition sometimes called jelly belly, but a large belly filled with this mucinous material produced by these tumors it can become very debilitating. Once it's gotten to that stage, we would say the patient also has a secondary clinical syndrome called pseudomyxoma peritonei. Diagnosis is very, very challenging with this disease because the uh, symptoms are extremely common. Abdominal discomfort, bowel issues, um, increasing girth, but it usually comes on in middle age. So that's a, something that happens naturally in middle age. Um, in women, it is almost always first diagnosed as an ovarian tumor, uh, and then later to find out that the tumor originated in the appendix and the first place it goes is to the ovary. So most women are misdiagnosed initially with ovarian cancer. Um, typically, to get a correct diagnosis, we are looking at a CT scan uh, and tumor markers. So the CEA, um, CA19.9 and CA125 tumor markers are indicative for some patients, but not all. But typically, it takes a really, really good radiologist to see it on a CT scan. So the standard of care for the mucinous appendiceal tumor that's sort of proliferated throughout the abdomen is a combination therapy called cytoreductive surgery with heated interperitoneal chemotherapy uh, known as HIPEC. Um, this treatment was developed for and works very well for many of our patients. Um, especially on the lower end of the malignancy spectrum. It works very well for those patients. It involves uh, a meticulous surgery where the surgeon goes in and cuts out each individual tumor nodule, hundreds and hundreds of tumor nodules. And then uh, once that's complete, there are no visible tumors in the abdominal cavity. The patient is then infused with a heated chemotherapy solution throughout their abdomen for about 90 minutes to kill any microscopic cells that are left in the abdomen. Typically, these surgeries can last 12 hours. It is a big procedure, um, but does work well for, for some of our patients. Uh, in addition to CRS HIPEC, many of our patients with higher grade malignancies are given systemic um, chemotherapy with colorectal cancer drugs. We don't have any um, pharmaceuticals that are particularly for appendiceal cancer, which is a challenge for us. Um, so there's one promising therapy in the clinical trials in Australia that's actually there, um, a study that we funded, the ACPMP Research Foundation funded. It's a combination um, compound that's being infused into the abdominal cavity in patients with advanced PMP to dissolve the mucinous tumors and um, with the intent to relieve symptoms and provide an extension of life and hopefully make some non-operative uh, patients operative. So that uh, study is in, in phase one, two clinical trial in Australia and we're hoping that it will come to the US and the EU later this year.